let's take a look at some financial maths. Now, financial maths is that one section that I normally believe in maths is the one that actually has the easiest applications um, when we're dealing with real life now. So financial maths is basically about dealing with different kinds of interest and interest rates with loans and savings and investments and all that kind of stuff there. So starting us off, let's deal with sort of interest. What is interest? Interest is a certain amount of now growth or decay in an amount of money that you initially saved or took a loan out or anything like that. So let me give you an example. If I then say I'm going to loan you 100 Rand, but I want it back with 10% interest. So basically, if I give you 100 Rand, you must give me back 110 Rand. That's that 10% interest for the services that I've rendered towards you. Okay, so we can now look at interest in two ways. We have what we call simple interest and we have what we call compound interest. Now, the formula for your sim simple interest is A is equal to P into 1 plus I times N, like that. This is called now our simple interest. And then we've got what we call our compound interest. which is similar, but slightly different. A is equal to P into 1 plus I all to the power of N. Now, the major difference between these two is that simple interest, your interest is gained on your principal amount, and it never really grows any, anywhere beyond that. So let me give you an example. If I said, I'm going to charge you 10% interest per annum, meaning per year, for the next five years on that 100 rand I loaned you. So basically, I'll give you 100 Rand after the first year, 10% of that is 10 Rand. The next year, it's another 10 Rand, and then it just keeps growing to 10 Rand every year for five years. After five years, you'd basically owe me 150 Rand. But now compound interest is slightly different, because now the interest gained is on the whole amount, including the previous amount of interest. So the first year, you'll have 110 Rand, because it's 10% of that first year. But now the second year, you'll get 10% of 110 Rand, which will be 11 Rand. Now you'll end up with now 121 Rand or something like that. And then the third year, your interest will be built on that amount now, which will be 12 Rand, 10 cents kind of thing. And then your interest amount that you're paying gets more and more and more with time. So both of these have their upsides and both of them have their downsides. So obviously, if I'm going to invest money, I want to have compound interest. So that the amount of interest I accrue every single year grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. But if you're going to loan an amount, an amount of money from someone that you only intend on paying back in one big lump sum, you're going to want simple interest. Because that way, the amount of interest that you accrue over time isn't as large and therefore you're not paying back as much money. So let's look at sort of graphs of what these would look like. So if I start off, the interest in this case would be very linear. You pay the same amount every single year incrementally. But compound interest isn't linear. It's exponential. The amount of interest you pay every year increases every year. So even though these two will probably start the same way in terms of how much interest you earn, compound interest very soon takes over and actually exceeds the amount of interest you earn with simple interest. And what, some, what people sometimes do then is actually a lot of companies use compound interest um, because they just get more money back for it. Okay. So now let's look at an example of each one of these. So let's say I want to loan you a thousand rand at 10% interest compounded annually and then we want to see how much you need to pay me back in five years time. So now my principal amount, the P, which is principal amount, so if you look at the equations, a is going to be the amount, the final answer you expect, the, the, the amount at the end of my loan period. P is your principal amount, it's the initial amount of money that you were loaned or you saved or anything like that. Then that's just one. I is your interest rate, right? Not in percentage form, it's normally in decimal form. N is the number of periods or number of years you are saving that amount of money for. So I loaned you a thousand rand and I said, at an interest rate of 10%, so that's going to be 10 over 100, or what you can call 0, 1. And I said it's going to be for a period of 5 years. Okay, so let's look at now both examples and how much we'd end up paying there. So if it was simple interest, I'm looking at 1,000 
into 1 plus 0 comma 1 times 5 which is 0 comma 5 and that will give us let's quickly work it out that's going to give you 1500 rand which is quite awesome okay so basically over the five year period you've gained 50 percent interest on your principal amount now let's look at if we had done the same transaction but in a compounded fashion we have our a is equal to 1000 into 1 plus 10 over 100 to the power of 5. And that will then give us 1,610 rand 51 cents. So you notice how now with compound interest, you'll always, if it's like now a savings or a loan situation, you'll always end up getting or paying more interest than you'd get for simple interest. Now these are the basic examples of how you'd work with compound interest and simple interest. Now I want to work on something that sort of takes us a bit further and we're looking at now instances where the amount isn't actually compounded per year but like usual if you take out a loan from the bank or anything like that it's compounded monthly meaning what they do is they recalculate this amount every single month and now every month you earn a bit of the interest a portion of the 10 percent and they add that to the amount and the next month they add a portion again they add that to the next amount and you end up paying even more than what you end up paying over the year. So now let's look at that third example where I said I'm going to do the exact same transaction but in this case we're going to compound the interest monthly. So now one thing I want to get you to realize that is now our N now doesn't do, is five years yes but it's going to be five years times 12 months and what we need to do to our I is divide our I by 12 months as well. So whatever you do in this case and you compound it by different terms so if it's monthly you're going to say I divided by 12 and multiply N by 12. If they said compounded uh, biannually, meaning twice a year, it means I'm going to divide by I by 2 and multiply my N by 2. So however many terms you'd find in a year, that's your now, what sometimes we call the M value, M for mommy. So now, let's try that and see what happens if we compound this amount monthly. So then we would have A is equal to P into 1 plus, I'm going to divide my I by my M and multiply my number of years by my M, which is now the period, meaning in this case it's months, so it's going to be 12 months in a year. If it was quarterly, there's four quarters in a year, you divide by four and multiply by four over there. Okay, sweet, let's see what the answer comes up to be. So we've got a thousand here, one plus, our I is 10%, so it's going to be 0, 0,1 divided by 12 times 5 by 12. So in that case, we will get... One thousand six hundred and forty-five rand thirty-one cents, roughly. So you see how now simple interest, the interest is calculated on your principal amount. That's all you earn. Compound interest, it compounds every single year, so it's it's more than your simple interest. But if you compound more often, so now if I compound monthly, not annually, I end up getting more interest back for my money. So if you had to compound every week, you'd end up paying even more. If I had to compound every single day, you'd end up paying even more. So that's a basic sort of look at now simple and compound interest. Go ahead, try some examples, see how you fare, and then I'll see you on the other side of this.